Welcome. This video is all about power. Um, now we've talked about energy and we've talked about work, but we haven't really talked about anything with regard to time with those things. And so we have this idea of power, which is defined as the rate at which work is done. Um, so it's the change in work divided by the change in time or amount of work done in some amount of time. So let's uh, say we have this um, object which is attached to a pulley and the pulley is pulling up on the object with a force F which is equal to its mass times gravity. So it starts it moving and it moves up 20 meters in 4 seconds and this object is 10 kilograms of, in mass and so the question is how much power is required by the little pulley up here in order to lift this thing a height of 20 meters in 4 seconds. Well to understand that we have to understand the fact that um, our definition of power is work over time, and uh, this particular power point uses an R instead of a D. But in, the, uh, in our equations, we've used a D. So our power definition will be work over time, and the amount of work done is equal to the uh, force times the distance divided by the time. Or the, the work is just force times distance. So if this is a 10 kilogram object, and it uh, is lifted up a distance of 20 meters, that means our force is 10 times 9.8, right, that's the, the force of gravity is mg, and I said this force up here was equal to mg, so 10 times 9.8, the height is 20 meters, and the distance, or the time is 4 seconds, so the power required by this particular pulley is 490 joules per second, right, because work is joules, uh, joules per second, or the SI unit for power is the watt, the capital W. Um, and so the, there's a relationship then between joules per second and watts, and that is that one watt is the amount of work that's done at a rate of one joule per second. So one, wor one watt is one joule of, of work done every second. Um, so we have a number of different units of power. One watt is, as we said, the work done at a rate of one joule per second. So one watt is the amount of work done in joules per second. Um, so therefore a kilowatt, which you may have heard from electricity, or if you've ever seen your electric bill, a kilowatt then is a thousand watts. In the US system, uh, we use the foot pound per second, um, but that's not really a very useful one because like, like this slide says, it's an older unit. And so really we use the horsepower in the US system. And the one horsepower is the work that's done at a rate of 550 foot pounds per second and we'll use the horsepower in next class's lab. So here's an example. What power is consumed in lifting a 70 kilogram robber in uh, 1.6 meters in 0.5 seconds? Go ahead and pause for a second, figure that out. We have a 70 kilogram robber lifted 1.6 meters in 0.5 seconds. How much work is, or how much power is consumed? Welcome back. So the power consumed is going to be again our force times our distance. Our distance in this case because it's a height uh, we can replace with h for height and we're going to get that it's 70 uh, kilograms times 9.8 times 1.6 meters as our work done. So when that is all said and done we divide that by our time 0.5 seconds and so it takes 2220 watts to lift this person uh, in that amount of time. So we can increase the amount of power by increasing the distance, increasing the force, or decreasing the time. And we can decrease the power by decreasing the force, decreasing the distance, or increasing the time. Here's another example. A 100 kilogram cheetah moves from rest to 30 meters per second in four seconds. What is the power? Remember, we know that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So with that said, go ahead and pause and figure out how much power was consumed when this cheetah move from rest to 30 meters per second in four seconds. And welcome back. Recognizing that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy gives us the fact that work is our final kinetic energy minus our initial kinetic energy, but our initial kinetic energy is zero. So therefore our power being work over time means that we're just taking our final kinetic energy and dividing it by time because work is equal to how much energy we increased or decreased by. So when we go through all of that, we end up with a power consumed of 1.22 kilowatts, or 1,220 watts. We do know that the average or constant velocity that is, uh, is distance covered by uh, some object in 
per unit of time. And so we can see then that when we talk about our force, uh, I guess we'll go back here, when we talk about our power as our work, which is f times x, uh, where x is the distance that we move through divided by time, this x over time, remember, is just our velocity. And so another definition of power is that power is the force times the average velocity. So if we move at some average velocity and there's a force that's applied over that uh, time that we're moving with the average velocity, the power is force times average velocity. For those of you in calculus, we can um, find a slightly different definition that work is the integral of power with respect to time because power is the derivative of work with respect to time. So uh, here is one final example. If we're asked what power is required to lift a 900 kilogram elevator at a constant speed of 4 meters per second, well, we know that this 900 kilogram elevator at a constant speed will require a force upward equal to its gravitational force. So our force then is uh, going to be given by mg. Our velocity is 4 meters per second, and so the result is that it would require 35.3 kilowatts. That's it for power. Next class, we're going to be talking about horsepower. We're going to be taking a look at uh, how we can calculate our own horsepower and seeing who has the most horsepower. See you next time.